there was a symmetry about Gonzaga's arrival in the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship game, the unbeaten Zags bidding to be the first unblemished champion since Indiana, the state's flagship basketball school, last accomplished the feat in 1976. That Gonzaga, the small Jesuit school tucked away in the northwest on the lesser Bain side of the Cascade Range, rolled up with a freewheeling offense, one that would appeal to the basketball cognoscentes Hoosiers' sensibilities, was all the better. A Gonzaga victory would have also put a bow on an anomalous season that was played through the coronavirus pandemic, when about one in five games, including a first-round matchup in this tournament, were called off and some teams went weeks without being able to play. Baylor, though, had other ideas, laying waste to those plans with a wrecking ball defense and a hail of three-pointers, emphatically ruining Gonzaga's bid for a perfect season on Monday night with an 86-70 victory at Lucas Oil Stadium to claim the program's first championship. Baylor's guard trio, advertised as the best in the country, was as good as its billing with Jared Butler scoring 22 points with seven assists, Davian Mitchell adding 15 points and five assists, and Mickey O'Teague contributing 19 points and the Baylor defense held the Zags to a season-low point total. As the final buzzer sounded, the Bears, who were eliminated by Gonzaga in the second round two years ago, bounded off the bench and onto the court, having vanquished a team they had long been eyeing. It's harder to win it this year than ever before with the stop pages and testing and the sacrificing your social life just so you can play basketball games," said Butler, the tournament's most outstanding player after athletes spent more than three weeks in an Indianapolis hotel, playing in front of diminished crowds and precluded from coming in contact with their families. Having no fans sometimes, it's just hard to get up sometimes for these games. He added, it was really cool to say we did that in the midst of adversity, in the midst of tribulations, and to bring it home for Baylor, it's amazing. As Baylor celebrated, Gonzaga's players huddled in front of their bench, arms draped over each other's shoulders coming to grips with an unfamiliar emotion, experiencing their first loss in 14 months. You really do forget what it's like to lose, said Corey Kispert, Gonzaga's senior forward. And every time it happens, it doesn't feel good. Almost from the moment the season tipped off in late November, the Bears, 28-2, had laid in the shadow of Gonzaga, 31-1 and they entered the tournament as they entered the season, as the second-ranked team in the country. As Baylor cruised past Houston in one semifinal on Saturday night, Gonzaga had less than 48 hours to recover from an overtime slugfest with UCLA that was as draining emotionally as it was physically. They had staved off the number 11 seeded Bruins only when Jalen Suggs banked in a shot from near half-court at the buzzer. The Zags looked out on their feet at the opening tip. When the jump ball goes up at the start of a basketball championship game, the football stadiums where title events are now staged are typically pulsating with energy. But because of local health restrictions, this stadium floor was sheathed in half by a black curtain, and only about 20% of the building's seats were filled. The official attendance was not announced. If the energy wasn't supplied by the crowd, the Bears brought their own, scoring the first nine points of the game and Gonzaga never drew closer than eight. Baylor, the best three-point shooting team in the country during the regular season, met its standard by making 10 of 23 shots behind the arc. The Bears also dominated the boards, outrebounding Gonzaga by 38-22, and limited the breakneck zags to 15 fast break points. I never felt like we played with that weight all year, Gonzaga coach Mark Few said. I always felt like we were the aggressor and we were always, I call it attack mode. We just ran into a team tonight that was, they were the aggressor clearly.